Hi. Welcome to our love discussion. I'm Jaha. I'm here with Let Our Voices Echo, and I'm sitting here with Eric Del Negro, uh, joining in from Western Mass. Um, he's a business analyst out there, so I'm just going to let him speak a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I am currently a business analyst at a farm credit technology company. Mm -hmm. We consult um, farm credit banks uh, with uh, software and technology and how to properly use it. Awesome. Awesome. So that jumps right into the topic for today's discussion where we want to figure out a way to uh, appropriately strategize putting love into our daily lives. I think that is the culmination of why we're here today. I think that's the culmination of why love, let our voices echo, has um, has been created. And with you doing what you do, I think it's imperative to kind of figure out a way how we can actually create an action plan to um, implement to implement love into our society. We have a lot of hate. Yep. We have a lot of um, um, negative feeling. Yep. But I think what we're lacking a lot of is love or genuine love. I think people agree. feel a lot of, um, I guess, genuine is the word that I'm trying to find. Genuine love is what we're trying to implement. So, yep. you know, let's talk about it. Yeah, so I guess from a strategic standpoint, um, at work, what we do is we work with our farm credit banks, and from a strategic standpoint, I think in life in general, you always got to shoot for the stars, and sometimes, and and sometimes to really make progress, you got to take the moon. Mm -hmm. So you shoot for the stars, take the moon. Um, the only time we have really progressed as people, as mm -hmm. a people, is through radical change, radical ideas, and something that s spreading a message of love mm -hmm. is. Um, unfortunately is seen in some people's eyes as radical yeah but let's take advantage of that and let's uh try and like you said implement it in our society and mm -hmm. if that calls us radicals or if that calls us um crazy people and you're never going to do it let's you know challenge accepted let's yeah. bring it. and i actually like that because i mean in a way it is kind of it's been made radicalized or yeah. something like that because if you look in our history, we had like, I guess the summer of love where hippies came along and yeah. that was kind of the idea that they were trying to promote, just total outright love. Yeah. Now, <clears throat> it might have been misunderstood back then because it was just a different time, it was a different generation. People were really into working really hard, getting to where you need to be and providing. Yeah. We're in a, in a cool time in our society where that's not necessarily the case. We want to work hard. We want to get ourselves moving forward. But that's done a little differently. Yeah. So now we're sitting here. You do what you do. I'm doing what I do. But all in all, it's to work towards this common goal of success. Yeah. Now, when it co goes back to you know spreading love, we might not be able to do it the same way as like our the the hippies of yesteryear right. did yeah. it. You know what I mean? It might look a little different. And that's where I guess the strategy is going to be tied in because um, I was talking to um, a previous guest about what love actually is. Um, it's, it's not something that can be totally defined, but with the definition that we have, we have to kind of individually figure out what love is to us. Yeah. Once that's figured out, then we can figure out how or, or create a strategy um, that will help us implement love in total yeah. um, it may seem radical but what else do we have yeah. you know what I mean and it's like I like the word radical because it's something that invokes this image of something that's so immediate something that's so drastic that is is it's completely changing the the fabric of what we know as life and that's the only way these things are going to work we can try to change things here and there little by little and stuff yeah. like that but what does that actually do it's like it's like how i see it it's something like um building a sandcastle on a tide okay so little by little you're building the sandcastle on this tide but every now and again you're going to have that water wash it away yep. so do we go little by little or do we make a big old drop of sand right here that's going to stay yep. even though it's not you know you haven't carved out the little details of it mm -hmm. but we're going to dump that love you know what i mean yeah. we're going to dump it and then we'll figure it out yeah, yeah. so um i was trying to tie in work <laughs> earlier and i guess this is you know a bad analogy but what we do at work is we like I said we provide consulting and 
we take the resources we have and mm -hmm. really try and implement um, the solutions that our banks want. Okay. And sometimes we have to go back to them and give them, you know, sometimes bad news and mm -hmm. say, you know, we can't do it this way, but we can do it this way. Mm -hmm. And I think um, when we're trying to implement love, there's going to be a lack of resources or a lack of um, some things are going to be missing when we're trying to implement that. Right. But we have to take what we can get at times. Um, but we have to really push for we really it's almost like negotiation. You Absolutely. know, you really have to push for what you want, mm -hmm. and then depending on you know the resources in front of you, you got to utilize them properly. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes it it, a, it depends. It's a case by case basis. Right. You know, sometimes you take things little by little, and then sometimes you just go for it all. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, when we strategize love, we really got to really find the proper avenues and channels and mm -hmm. how to properly utilize our resources in trying to implement it. For I sure. think that's important. I think um, <clears throat> figuring out what a resource for love is, is going to be an important step towards making this actually happen because I think a lot of things can be resources like it, it, in terms of spreading love. You know, it could be something as little as we were talking about like giving money to homeless. Like, I mean, that's something that people consider love, but it's, it's, it is, you know what I mean? You're taking a yeah. step out of yourself to help another human being make it for that much longer. Whatever it is that they use, whatever you give them for, you're helping at least a little bit. That's something that I think could be considered a loving act, but where, where I think as human beings we find ourselves kind of tossing up um, difficulty is that <clears throat> we have things that can change, and I think change is where we're going to have to go back to change. Change and love, I, I think, go hand in hand, but in order to provoke change, we just need moving parts. Yep. But with a society like what we have right here, it's like in order to make those parts move, you have to have enough people following yeah. that ideology. Mm -hmm. But what I found is that people are, it's easier for people to say, well, you know, I'm one person. And because I'm one person, I'm not going to make that big of a difference. But you have enough people who say that, you're losing a lot of resources. Yep. So totally. I think with that, the idea of having a defined, uh, or excuse me, a definition of love, I think having a strategy, um, those things will allow us to not feel like a drop in the bucket. Yeah. Because there will be like-minded individuals who are out here trying to do the same thing that you can see. You don't have to be told, hey, I'm out here, I'm trying to promote love, what are you doing? You know what I mean? It can be so obvious in the fact that, okay, this person is moving kind of how I want to move. All right, now I can make a difference because those people are making a difference, yeah. at least in my life. It starts to become a group effort. Exactly. Yeah. So it's like you almost have to buy into the idea of love, and I don't think that's hard because... Everyone. Has. What else are you choosing? What how else you, are you how can choosing? You not choose anything exactly, but and everyone's capable. I, I mean, I want to say that everyone is capable. Generally speaking, everyone is capable of love. Everyone has it within them. That is something that's written on your heart when you're born. It's just something that's there. So, with that being said, as you go through life, there's experiences, there's things, there's changes that happen to you that may take you away from um, exuding that love. Yeah. It might build a wall around what you know or what you would consider yourself to be as loving. And that's just something that we have to break away from. I think the root of everything, what everything boils down to at the end of the day, is moving through life lovingly. And I think there's a misconception as to what love is. It's not coming up to somebody and kissing them. You know what I yeah. mean? <laughs> it's not trying to hug everybody. It's not sending you flowers. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not anything like that. It's not the Valentine's Day definition of right. love. You right. know what I mean? For sure. Loving and being a loving individual means that you care and you have compassion and you ultimately are so invested in the progression of us, mm -hmm. not just you, mm -hmm. not just me but the progression of us that you will do what it takes to get there. Yeah. It's not going to be any negative action. It's not going to be something that is detrimental to our long-term goal. But even if it doesn't work, at least it's some positive action put towards this goal of spreading love. And if it doesn't work, okay, we can chalk that up and now try something different. Yeah. But at least we tried it. For sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's it goes back to there's a lot of debate about 
the collective ideas or individual ideas. Mm -hmm. But realistically, we live in a society where both exist and we have to determine what do we all collectively want to um, be on the same side of? Mm -hmm. And what do we all want to be ind as individuals, make our own individual choices? But collectively, we need to come to a, an agreement here mm -hmm. on uh, love versus hate. Right. And I think really trying to spread a message of love and really getting members onto your team, mm -hmm. as a poor word to say it, mm -hmm. is understanding intent. I think intent is such an important piece that's missing with all of this craziness that's going on. Right. Um, What's when the we goal? are so right, when we are so tied up in, well, this person said this. It's like, well, you know, what? like, what was their intent here? Mm -hmm. That per that person could have done something wrong, but what were they really trying to sell to mm -hmm. you? What were they really trying to? What message were they really trying to send? Mm -hmm. And that gets missed oftentimes. I see in a lot of conversations. I see in especially in the workplace. Right. It happens. Right. Um, and. You know, that comes down to the public morality. Mm -hmm. And it comes down to what are we trying to achieve as a team? Because one country is just, we're just a group of people. You know, we are a exactly. collective group of people. Exactly. Um, just trying all to figure under, it out. Under, trying to figure out all living under the same laws. Mm -hmm. And people can make individual choices, but mm -hmm. we are living as a collective. Mm -hmm. And um, those two things need to be defined. Right. And we really need to uh, take a second, think about intent behind somebody's action. And then learn from that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I actually appreciate that because you're right. No matter what way we flip it, we are all here as a collective. Yep. No matter what we feel about the next person, just geographically, that's just what we are. We're yep. here collectively. So we have a choice at that point. We have a choice to kind of create volatile situations where you, you'll have turmoil, you'll have conflict, you'll have protests, you'll have brutalities. You know, I'm just trying to throw in some yeah. socially uh, common words that yep. people know. You know, you're going to have those issues because we can't work together even though we're all here together. Yep. You know what I mean? So I think that is a very important thing to address because no matter what, no matter how you flip it, no matter the person that you want to say that you hate, you're still here with them. Yeah. So it's like you have a choice. You're put in a box with a person, right? And the idea is that you both are supposed to work together to get out of this box, mm -hmm. but you hate that person, okay? So now, what is the choice? Are we just gonna sit in here and hate each other and be confined in this box for the rest of our lives? Are we gonna eventually just figure it out? I might not agree with you 100%, yep. but let's help each other, let's collaborate, let's figure this out so that we both Yep. can progress and get out of this box. I think the box here is prejudice. Mm -hmm. I think the box here is um, injustice. I mm -hmm. think the box here is um, inequalities and misunderstandings. Totally. So let's us as, I'm not saying I hate you, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. But let us as individuals come together and get out of that box. Yeah. And I totally. think that comes with strategy, that comes with implementation and it ultimately winning hearts and minds it, winning That's, hearts and minds you yeah. have to understand your peer yep. first once you understand then you win that heart you win that mind then we can move forward number one rule in life for me is know your audience know what makes people tick know what makes people giddy about certain things mm -hmm. like really got to know your audience mm -hmm. and um yeah i couldn't agree more absolutely and I uh, thank you, Eric, for coming on to our love discussion. Absolutely, anytime. Here. Um, we will be doing it again, and um, I hope to get back to Massachusetts safely. Thank you very much. Yeah. And hey. cut! <laughs>